All right, Josie. All right, uh, good morning. It is a beautiful morning in the state of Washington. Uh, we're looking forward to Father's Day this weekend to honor our fathers and grandfathers. Um, a note, if people want to honor their uh, father this weekend, we think a really good way would be to help your father or grandfather get a vaccination. Nothing better than saving a father alive, and we can do that this Father's Day if we can encourage our fathers to get the vaccination. We know that this saves lives. It is saving lives. It'd be a great Father's Day if we have more fathers get a vaccination uh, this weekend. Uh, we have good news to report this morning. Uh, one of the things, good news we can report is that we believe that our incentive program is having a positive benefit in saving lives and getting people vaccinated in the state of Washington. Uh, since we announced the incentive program, the lottery drawings and the like, we had been experiencing a very, very rapid decline in our vaccination rate. We essentially had fallen off a cliff in the previous two weeks, almost a 50 percent reduction each week. We have arrested that decline uh, largely, and we feel that's good news because we want to increase our vaccination rates. We want to open up. We're trying to get to 70 percent as soon as we can. And so I'm really glad that this appears to be encouraging people to think about the vaccine. And what we're finding is when people think about the vaccine uh, and they look at the evidence and they look how effective it is, they look at the fact that it's 95 percent effective, they understand when they think about the fact that the people who are in our hospitals today struggling for breath are the people who did not get vaccinated. When they talk to their physicians and they look at the compelling evidence now that hundreds of millions of people have safely received this vaccine. People are getting vaccinated. So that's good news. And we continue to increase uh, our numbers uh, by tens of thousands each day. That's really, really good news. So we feel good about that. But we want to expand that access of this incentive program. When we started the incentive program, uh, we were unable to include uh, active military duty and those in the Veterans Administration System who had received their vaccination through those systems because the federal government uh, would not give us the identity of those individuals. I'm really happy to say we have found a way uh, to honor our active military duty and our veterans in this regard. And we're announcing today a program we called a Heroes Thanks program. We want to say thanks to our veterans and our active duty personnel. So we are initiating a separate uh, incentive program and a, and a, a separate lottery for those Washingtonians who have received their vaccine through the Department of Defense or the, uh, the Veterans Administration. And the way this is going to work is that we will announce winners uh, once a week for three weeks, starting on July 30th. Uh, each week, a person in this pool, either a veteran or an active duty personnel, will receive an award of $100,000 in the first two weeks and a grand prize of of $250,000 cash in the third, third week of the drawing. Uh, this Clearly, these are some of our most treasured Washingtonians, and I'm glad to be, to be able to provide this incentive program for them. There will also be Amazon gift cards worth $250 and state the parks gift cards for $100. Uh, we hope this will help more fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers nieces, nephews, sons, and daughters to think about getting this vaccine. I trust that it will. Uh, this program will be funded through the same policy of federal uh, COVID relief dollars that we have uh, in our previous. Uh, by the way, this is a separate pool, so this will be a separate pool uh, under the lottery uh, rules. One thing we want to ask folks, we don't have the names of people who are active duty military personnel. Uh, we are unable to get those from the Department of Defense. So we'll need those folks to, uh, to submit their names uh, to the, this program to sign up. So we hope that people will sign up. Those in the veterans, we, we, ha we have a different system. But in active duty personnel, you'll need to sign up for this, and we hope that, that you will do so. So we're really happy to honor these heroes. We hope this is going to save lives of these heroes. I trust that it will. So that's really good news. Talk a little bit more about this is our tremendous leader, uh, Alfie Alvarado Ramos, who's going to talk about this program. Alfie, thanks for your leadership.
Alfie, you want to uh, chime in here? Thank you, Governor, for the opportunity to address our veteran and military community on this amazing incentive program. Top of the morning to my brothers and sisters at arms and their family members. I am Command Sergeant Major Retired Alfie Alvarado, Director of your Washington Department of Veterans Affairs. I join Governor Inci to thank you for your service and to amplify the efforts made to ensure you are included in our state's vaccination program and also the incentives that are being provided. I lost last month to COVID one of my dearest friends and former first sergeant. Had he been vaccinated, his wife, children, and grandchildren would still have him among them to receive this, his love and care. This was a huge loss. The vaccine saves lives, and we need you here. We urge all our veterans, service members, and their families to take the shots, present arms. You can be a winner in this special lottery, but more important, you will be a winner at life. Thank you, Governor, for this opportunity. Alfie, thanks for your creativity in the lottery system working on this. Not every state is honoring their heroes as we are, and I'm glad we're able to do this. So uh, present arms. I like that, Alfie. Thanks for your creative uh, sloganeering in this regard, and we hope that this will help our heroes. Now, another initiative that we're working on to help people make decisions on the vaccine is we know who the most credible people about the efficacy and safety of the vaccines are our medical uh, professionals, our physicians, our nurses, uh, otherwise. These are the folks we turn to to save our lives on a daily basis from heart disease and cancer and now COVID. And so we want to uh, use the energy of our physicians and other, otherwise to be able to share their advice with Washingtonians. This is very, very important. So in order to maximize the opportunity for the medical professionals to share their knowledge with their patients, we want to make sure that they can be compensated for providing that professional counseling. So today an emergency order uh, is going to be issued by Insurance Commissioner Mike Kreidler, who will join us in a moment, which will allow medical providers to bill insurance companies for proactively reaching out to their patients to talk about the vaccine, the efficacy, the safety, and the reason this helps save lives. We think that this can put uh, to work a very powerful uh, uh, force in our state, which is our physicians, who we listen to on a daily basis in our most uh, intimate health decisions. We want to make sure that they can proactively do outreach to go out and contact, to call, to talk to their patients about why this makes sense to get this vaccine and just to share the basic scientific data. And the reason this is important is that unfortunately a lot of our citizens have been exposed to deception and, and, and outright falsehoods that have given them undue concerns about the vaccine. And what we have found is that when they get the truth, when they get the, the, the real lowdown from their doctors, they then realize getting this vaccine makes sense. So we want to empower physicians to do outreach to their patients. Uh, a Kaiser family poll found that eight out of 10 people turn to their medical provider if they really want information about this vaccine. That's why it's critical to engage these physicians. We really do want to get to a position where this is a standard operating procedure uh, for physicians that they will proactively go out and talk to their patients in a way to get them to make this decision. We think this is a critical component of our vaccination effort. So this is a first step in this initiative. You'll be hearing for us in the, in the near future about additional steps and an initiative to bring our physicians really into this battle. They've been doing great work to date. They've been working so hard, our nurses, our physicians, overtime, and they've been saving lives right, left, and center. We want to empower them now to even up that to advance their ability to share information with their patients. So I want to thank Mike Kreidler for his leadership. Mike, uh, tell us more about this program. Governor, well, thank you very much, and you certainly covered it very well. I, I, I worked for many years in a, in a primary care clinic, 
first for Group Health, and now it's been acquired by Kaiser. But I can tell you firsthand that working in a primary care clinic, those providers can play a very key role here in helping to reassure people who might have reluctance for whatever particular reason that might be. But they can ask questions, can give answers, and I think the trust factor is something we need to encourage. And the emergency order now to make it easier for people to be able to be reached, touched by their providers so that they have that kind of communication should help to make them a great deal more comfortable going forward so that they really understand the benefits of being vaccinated. There are so many reasons to look at this vaccine as a miracle drug in the face of this pandemic. We need to get people vaccinated. The latest word on the latest variants are much more like seeing something on steroids here as opposed to what we've seen in the past. Those people that are unvaccinated are a huge risk to themselves and certainly to others. We need to make sure that they get vaccinated and the providers can help lead them down that path so that they understand the value and get vaccinated so much the better. I'm glad I can join with you in issuing an emergency order to make that possible. Thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Thank your leadership, always for consumers, Mike. We really appreciate it. We think this is going to make a difference. And by the way, I want to note that, you know, physicians have been doing this on their own already. I talked to a family doc in Tri-Cities yesterday. They're already proactively, you know, effectively talking to their patients. But this will allow more to be able to to allow that to happen. So we're excited about this. Uh, I will also be uh, issuing an order to our health or through our health care authority that will implement the same incentive uh, for providers in the Medicaid and the public employee and school employees program as well. So we have good coverage for this to the state of Washington. We're going to put our docs, uh, uh, their knowledge to work. We think this is going to save a lot of lives in our state. More good news in the health front today. Now, the Supreme Court once again has resisted a challenge to our health care law that has been so effective with hundreds of thousands of Washingtonians covered under the Affordable Care Act. It's really great news. You know, I, I think it would be great, and I look forward to the day when, when uh, frankly, Republicans stop these efforts to try to dismantle our, our, our health care system. It would be great if this would be the last round. We need to work together to extend health care to Washingtonians, certainly during the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. And I'm pleased to say that because we have succeeded now for years and years of resisting the Republican effort to dismantle this system, we continue to add uh, Washingtonians to the system. We now have 860,000 lives who are covered in our state because of this important law, and that has gone up by uh, several thousand this year. So we continue to build this, and that's a good thing for the health care in the state of Washington. Before I take a few uh, questions, I want to talk about our reopening. Uh, as you know, uh, we will reopen on June 30th or before that if we hit the 70 percent mark of those over 16 getting their first dose. And we're making progress on this. Uh, we feel good about this. Uh, we think that we, there is a distinct possibility that we can hit that 70 percent before June 30th. That's one of the reasons we're excited about people continuing to get vaccination just in the next uh, few days. This would be a great time to get the vaccination, uh, both because you are eligible for this, uh, you know, winning a million dollars plus, uh, plus saving your lives, plus helping us reopen our state potentially before June 30th. Uh, our data is sound on this. We feel good about it. Our numbers are, are, are growing, and I hope people will consider in the next few days getting their vaccination. We certainly are making it available. Uh, we are also uh, continuing our efforts on equity as well. And I've been pleased. I was in Tri-Cities yesterday looking at our, our uh, efforts to provide vaccines to those in the agricultural industry. And I'm very pleased that we now have had very extensive outreach providing vaccinations to people in the agricultural industry where they work, where people can go and 
If they're working in a packing house, a processing site, we can make sure they can get their vaccination right on the job on the site. This has been very effective. It's been appreciated by hardworking people in the ag industry, and I appreciate everybody in the industry working hard together on, on, this, on this effort. It's having success, so we're happy about that. Uh, just closing note, uh, as Governor of Washington, this is a great time to be in Washington State. I'm just seeing so many positive things in our state. As we're coming out of the COVID large part of the, of the shadow, great news. Uh, great news that we're putting people to work in clean energy jobs. I was in Vancouver uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, saw wind turbines uh, producing longshoremen jobs because we're building a clean energy economy. In Pasco, I noted we saw farm workers uh, getting uh, the vaccine. I was uh, at Edmonds a College the other day seeing students who are essentially splitting photons and realizing quantum entanglement right at that college which is exciting to me to see this incredible advances scientifically uh, that we're seeing. We're seeing advances in equity and economic justice. Uh, this is a good time to be in Washington State, and I hope people appreciate not just the sunshine, but all the progress we're making uh, as a community. We've struggled together. We're making advances together, and I hope people uh, will feel some joy at, at this moment. With that, uh, we have Lacey Fehrenbach available for questions, as well as Nick Struley and our senior policy advisor, Molly Voris. And with that, you may fire when ready, Gridley. First, we'll go to Rachel LaCourt with AP. Go ahead, Rachel. First, for Lacey, um, I just want to make sure we're updated on how much initiating, uh, initiating vaccination rate is right now. I know there's a little bit delay between the numbers we're getting from the governor's office of what is seen on the database. Um, and then for the governor, there have been delays in getting rental assistance, federal funds to landlords and having advocacy groups that express concern that people who have applied for rental assistance are at risk of being evicted once the moratorium is lifted on the 30th before that money comes through. Are you going to extend the moratorium until that assistance bag month starts to clear or is there an alternative way to address those people who have applied for rental assistance but have not, have not yet received it? And then lastly, for Commissioner Kreidler, um, I just want to make sure I'm clear in your order. It, it, it allows providers to bill, but does it require the insurance companies to pay that? And are customers at risk, um, patients at risk of being on the hook for any fees if their insurance company doesn't cover what the provider billed? Thank you. Mike, you want to start on that? Uh, uh, first is, is we're not here to, to trying to develop a program here to, to enrich uh, physicians. We're only trying to give them some assistance in doing what they're already doing, as the governor pointed out. They're already doing outreach with their with their patients. And so this is one where uh, they're, they're engaged in activity with their health care personnel uh, to reach, do outreach with their parent, uh, patients. Uh, they'll be compensated for that when uh, they do appropriate outreach. Uh, it has guidelines around it, so it can't be uh, potentially abused. This is here to make sure we're getting people vaccinated and that physicians and, and other healthcare providers can do the kind of outreach that's going to be the most positive, effective way possible. And I believe we're going to accomplish that. We're working closely with the healthcare, uh, both with the insurers and with the provider community to make sure that this strikes the appropriate balance and we'll be monitoring it closely. And that's the same with the PEB and, and Medicaid rules that, that I announced with uh, the order that will come through through our healthcare authority, which is the parallel action uh, in this regard. Uh, in regard to the eviction moratorium, we are concerned about the uh, the transition period where these programs are not yet up and running uh, in, in either regard, including mediation systems. So we are concerned about this. We are looking for some potential solution. We have not made any uh, decisions, final decisions on this. We're continuing to talk to legislators and folks in the, uh, uh, who are affected by this. So we'll have some decisions, obviously, before uh, the end of June. Uh, but we are working on some potential resolution of these issues. I can't tell you exactly what that'll be at the moment. Lacey, did you have something you wanted to add there? 
on Rachel's question, um, we have seen a fall off in initiation of the starting year series in the second half of May. Um, that, that fall off, that decline has slowed down. In recent weeks, we've been seeing on an average day 10 to 15,000 first dose administrations. Uh, we obviously want to see more than that. This is a life-saving uh, product and vaccine, as both uh, the governor and commissioner have mentioned. Uh, it is ne there has never been an easier and better time to get vaccinated in Washington State. There is supply all over the state. Our providers and clinics are ready. So if you are one of those Washingtonians that has not yet started your series, we really encourage you to step forward. Um, you will be protecting yourself, your community. You'll help our state reopen sooner, um, and you might win a cold prize as well. Uh, Lacey, could you just save the number? I know Rachel would be interested in this. I think it was 67.7 this morning. If, is that correct? Most recent we number. Are up, uh, yes, we are up to 67.8% of people 16 and older who have started their series. Rachel, is that what you were looking for? Is, um, my question, though, is when I last checked the dashboard today, it still has it at 65 percent. So what's what's the delay in having the dashboard reflect the most accurate numbers? Thanks, Rachel. So that 67.8 percent includes aggregate data that we receive from the Department of Defense and Veterans Affairs. Those data don't come to us in a way that we can incorporate them into the dashboard. We do have a separate graphic that we have been posting that includes the rate uh, with Department of Defense and Veterans Affairs uh, locations in Washington State included. Uh, that will be posted imminently to our website if it hasn't been uh, to reflect the difference. So the 65% is uh, of the data that has come into our state data system. And then there's an additional 2.8% that are uh, attributed to defense and veterans affairs. Our system of federalism was not set up to make COVID pandemic data easy. <laughs> we still love our system of democracy. And by the way, we'd like to keep it. Um, in fact, if I may uh, add something to my comments, I, I note that the court had dismissed a recall petition against me, and I note that because I think all of us are concerned about efforts that are ongoing to relitigate elections in the presidential race. We ought to be concerned about ongoing efforts not to accept election results. I hope that we can have elections and follow them and not have arguments about who's president of the United States either. Uh, next, we'll go to Joe O'Sullivan with the Seattle Times. Go ahead, Joe. Hello, uh, two questions. First one for the governor. Uh, civilians can win up to a million dollars. Why not a million dollars for a service member here? And then second question for whoever can answer. I know that the Federal Indian Health Service was involved in uh, supplying vaccines throughout the pandemic. Are all the tribal members in the state um, in the state's immunization uh, database and therefore eligible for this, or are there some outside of uh, state records? Lacey, can you answer the record issue? Uh, thanks. We are getting data from most of the tribes, and if there are any that for some reason are only providing directly to the feds, we do have a way that we can incorporate their data into our system. Right. Uh, as far as the, the veterans in active duty, we tried to do something that that uh, coordinated the fact that you have a lot, lot better chance of winning in this pool, because the pool is so much smaller than the larger pool for the whole state, to try to make it at least uh, as good and, and better than your odds for winning compared to the amount of the, the dollar compared to regular uh, citizens. And we achieved that. You actually, if you do the, the math, you have a lot better chance of winning if you're in this smaller pool. 
So you have a little less size of the total prize. So I'm very confident this is very fair. And these are our heroes. They're deserving. I think there's a good argument they got a little better deal than non-heroes in this, which is what we were shooting for. All right. Up next, we'll go to Jerry Cornfield with the Everett Herald. Go ahead, Jerry. Good morning. I have two questions. The first for Lacey. Uh, the second, uh, when do you expect to get the next batch of data from the federal agencies? I think last, a few days ago it was announced that 152,000 sounded like one batch. I wondered when you get the next batch. And for the governor, uh, there have been compacts with the tribes for sports betting that I think have been sent to your office, uh, 15 different tribes, tribal compacts. Um, have you or when will you be um, acting on those? I assume soon. I don't, I don't have a date at the moment. Lacey. Um, the, the data that we are getting from the Department of Defense and Veterans Affairs, it comes in different intervals. Uh, I want to be clear, we're getting the Department of Veterans Affairs data from their dashboard, so we can check that regularly. Um, for the Department of Defense, it comes to us in reports from the different bases approximately weekly, and we add it whenever we get it. All right. Up next, we'll go to Drew Mickelson with King 5. Go ahead, Drew. Good morning, Governor. What's the say to those who, you're six months in, still have not been convinced by you, by the incentives, maybe by their doctor or their relatives to get the vaccine? Do you, do you feel like, hey, we've done everything we can? And then are you frustrated or concerned that we might see outbreaks in those populations? Later this summer, this fall, this winter? Uh, yes, I am very concerned about this. Look, I, I gotta tell you, this just tugs at my heart that we still have sometimes a dozen people a day of Washingtonians dying un unnecessarily in our state. I talked to a longshoreman in, in Vancouver the other day that one of their one of their treasured members lost his life. And if he'd been vaccinated, you know almost a certainty would not have had he been vaccinated. That really, really hurts to lose people we love when we have this life-saving product that is available. And I am concerned about the future because of these variants coming on. We do have a growth of two variants that are concerning in our state, uh, both of which appear to have be more transmittable and one of which might have an increase risk of breakthrough. That means they can break the vaccine, even though you've been vaccinated. And when you've got a third of your population not vaccinated, you know, that's over a million people that have a target on their back today, probably two million or more, who are just walking around with a, a COVID target on them that are totally exposed. And one of our concerns is that people would have a false sense of security because we have millions of people that are vaccinated, that somehow that protects people who are not vaccinated. It does not. And if we have, you know, millions of people still walking the streets that are not vaccinated, they're at much or maybe more risk if these variants get going and they are growing in the nation and in our state. So I am very concerned about this, that we individually do not start to lose more lives as the variants increase as a percentage of the total of infection, uh, and if we it would have a fall off in these vaccination rates. So yes, I am very concerned about this. Uh, it will be, you know, pleasing that more people are getting vaccinated, but for every person who remains unvaccinated, we just don't consider our work done. So our work is not done. We are going to be at this for weeks and months to come. We are not going to stop our efforts till we get everybody potentially vaccinated who will even have some consideration of doing so. Now, here's the good news in this regard is that we continue to see people who become more and more comfortable with the vaccine. They see their neighbors getting vaccinated and every time that happens, one more neighbor talks to their neighbor and said, look, I had a good result, you know, and that inspires another person and that's going to continue. 
The more people who talk to their physicians are, who find out it's safe and works are going to get the vaccine. And there is a human tendency that, you know, sometimes we just put things off. People are busy. And so this is going to be a long-term effort for us. We're going to be diligent. We're not going to stop until we save as many lives as humanly possible. We are intent in doing that. Our publicity campaign is continuing to provide people information. By the way, this information works. You know, not everybody has heard this information. A lot of Washingtonians saw something on social media with some crazy story that happened to somebody somewhere that's probably not true. And they haven't heard yet that these are 95% effective. They haven't heard yet that 98% of the people in our hospitals are unvaccinated people. They haven't heard yet about the risk of these variants becoming much more dangerous to people. And they haven't heard yet and thought about the fact that, you know, you're going to be free of masks if you do get vaccinated. And when that starts to people think about it, I'm confident more and more people will become vaccinated. So we intend to, to be working on this to the last life is saved. That's our mission. And so far, I think we're doing a pretty good job at it. We'll go to Austin Jenkins with the Northwest News Network. Go ahead, Austin. Uh, thank you, Governor. You noted those variants that are concerning. Do you see anything at this point that would jeopardize a full reopening on or before June 30th, especially in light of um, the delay we've now seen in England to, I think, a 30-day delay in their reopening? No, I, I just can't foresee not uh, opening on June 30th. And the reason is, is we continuing to have a decline in numbers at this moment of infections and a decline of hospitalizations at this moment. And that has been consistent the last several weeks. So I can see no foreseeable uh, event uh, that would lead us not to open on June 30th, or again, earlier if we hit the 70% mark. But this comes with a caution that as these variants continue to increase in our state and the transmission rate increases, sometime in the future that may not be the case. We have to realize that remains a risk. So this is a, a moment for great celebration. We intend to celebrate on June 30th. We'll have more to say about how we're going to do that or, or days earlier. But we have to have a realization of the, the remaining danger. Next, we'll go to Essex Horton with Cairo 7. Go ahead, Essex. Yes, uh, a question for Lacey Fernbach and one for uh, Commissioner Kreidler. Uh, for uh, Lacey Fernbach, could could you tell us again what our current daily vaccination number is and what number would we need to hit if we were to be able to open and hit that 70 percent before uh, June 30th? And uh, for Commissioner Kreider, could you give us more detail uh, on the impact of the Supreme Court decision on the Washingtonians who have Obamacare? What is saved for them? What is going to be available for them and others? Governor from Mike, I'll, I'll begin and, and to that question. I, I couldn't be happier with the decision that was just rendered uh, by the Supreme Court uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, it means that uh, millions of uh, people in this country and uh, hundreds of thousands of people in the state of Washington are going to have some peace of mind that uh, tomorrow they might not see their health insurance go away. Uh, so this is a very positive step uh, from that perspective. Um, at the same time, it means we redouble our efforts. We've got to do more to make sure that uh, the cost that takes place for, for individuals, particularly if they receive uh, little or no subsidy uh, and are still not uh, well-to-do people, we need to make sure that we're doing more to assist those people. And that's something we need to work hard to, to accomplish going forward. And that's going to be a real challenge for this administration given the narrowness of their majority in the Congress. At the same time, uh, with that decision behind us, I think we can really start to focus on the right part of it, which is the Affordable Care Act is here today. It's going to be here tomorrow. Let's make it work for Washingtonians and the rest of the people of this good country. Yeah, if I can add to that, our state is, is not resting on our laurels. As you know, we're the first state in the country to be working on a public option that can take measures to maintain 
reasonable pricing. And we're working on that, and I'm glad we got Mike and our health care authority working on that. But it sure is good news that health care for 860,000 Washingtonians didn't evaporate because the Republicans want to destroy that system. That's really good news today. Um, Essex, we have about 10 to 15,000 people a day initiating vaccine in Washington State over the recent uh, few weeks. And to reach our 70% metric, we need about 130,000 more people who are unvaccinated presently to get vaccinated in Washington State. Uh, it is absolutely possible. There is ample supply. There is ample capacity both to administer those vaccines and among our provider and community-based organizations uh, to counsel and um, answer questions among those who have concerns or um, questions in mind. We just need Washingtonians to step forward. So if you have not been vaccinated, please uh, reach out to your provider or go to a clinic. If you know someone who hasn't been vaccinated, talk to them about it. Tell them why you got vaccinated. Together we can reach this goal and we can do it before June 30th. All right. Up next, we'll go to Eleni Dow with KXLY. Go ahead, Eleni. Hello. All right. We are going to go ahead and come back to Eleni. Up next, we'll go to Keith Eldridge with Coma4. Go ahead, Keith. Um, a question for Lacey and then for the governor. Uh, Lacey, it looks like on the dashboard we're averaging 30,000 vaccinations a day, which would put us closer to reaching that uh, goal of 130, 134,000. Um, try to figure out the discrepancy there. And given this fact, uh, uh, Governor Inslee, a lot of the businesses are saying they need to open today in order to get fully open by June 30th. So why not to allow them to do that, to get people uh, back to work off unemployment today and ramp up for the big June 30th uh, fully reopening, but they need to get started today. Well, Keith, they can get started today. I encourage them to get started today. Get ready to fully open on June 30th. There's nothing stopping them from getting people ready to hire and and get the orders in. No, we encourage them to do that. I think it's going to be a joyous celebration when they do that. Uh, and so we're looking forward to that. And I'd like to do it earlier. I want to get those businesses open as early as possible. That's why I'm urging people to get vaccinated today. And I, I think we are heading in that, in that direction. So no, don't wait. Let's get going. Let's pop those uh, corks on June 30th and get people back into our restaurants. I'm excited about that. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the, uh, Lacey, you want to ask the question about, about uh, uh, Keith, the number of doses by day is total doses administered. It includes first and second doses of the two dose vaccines, and then of course the only dose of Johnson and Johnson. So that um, initiation goal that we have is really about people getting their first dose uh, for Pfizer and Moderna or their only dose of J and J. Next, we'll go to Casey Decker with Krem. Go ahead, Casey. Uh, Governor, you mentioned that um, active duty members have to go and sign up for this lottery. Uh, is that system already established? And then also, if you have the records for veterans so they don't have to set up, why not just include them in the original lottery? We just got those records. We did not have access to them. The VA finally uh, were willing to give them to us, so we figured out a way to do that. Would have been easier the other way. But I'm very happy that now we have an independent heroes only pool. So we make sure heroes are going to win, right? So had we not done this, we couldn't have been made sure that a hero was going to win. On this policy, it worked out pretty well. Now we know for sure a hero is going to win three times over $100,000. That's a pretty good deal. So we're happy about this. These are people who've been multiple deployments, people who are sending their relatives overseas for years now in these decades of war. And so I feel good about making sure heroes are going to win by having this separate pool uh, of winners. Just about um, the readiness for that. Yeah, we're going to be working with the VA and the Department of Defense to really get this out, to do the outreach to their vaccinated members and family members. 
So we'll have that um, ready to go, and we'll be working with them closely um, very soon. All right. Up next, we're going to go ahead and try Eleni Dow with KXLY again. Go ahead, Eleni. Hello. All right. I'm hoping that this works now. Uh, my question for the governor is, will the eviction moratorium be lifted by June 30th or extended? And if there is an extension until when, and if it is going to be lifted, will resources be in place for actions before then? Yeah, I know people are eager for that answer. We have not made final decisions on this issue. I can tell you that we are very aware of the the gap between the current termination of the order and the standing up of the relief for tenants and landlords. That's a significant gap, and I'm concerned about it. We are right now figuring out how to handle that situation. So I don't have a definitive answer for you to those questions. We will as soon as we can. We will, we will share that with you as soon as we can. All right. We've got time for one more question. We'll go to Steve McCarran with Como 4. Go ahead, Steve. Thank you. I have a question for Lacey and then a question for the governor. Uh, first of Lacey, given the daily average of people getting uh, initiating vaccination and how many people still need to be vaccinated to reach that 70% mark, to hit that mark, do you still think it's going to be really close to June 30th, if not a couple days after? I think that's something you might have said about a week or two ago. And then for the governor, uh, a question that expands on your remarks about the shot of a lifetime incentive program. If you look at the numbers that you're seeing so far, how do you rate the success of that program in actually getting people to roll up their sleeves? I think there was uh, dozens of prizes, if I remember correctly, that went unclaimed from the first round, and those will carry over into a drawing next month. But given the amount of money that's involved here, has it been worth it, and are you satisfied with how it's looking? Yeah, let, let me ask that question. Yes, I am happy that we've done this. Look, every life is a multi-million dollar value in the state of Washington. Every single life we save, and every time we get somebody vaccinated, that's a potential life saved. And I'm confident we saved lives because of this, and I'll tell you why. In the two or three weeks before we initiated this incentive program, every week we were seeing a very steep drop, drop, like it went off a cliff very, uh, very quickly. It happened nationwide. We weren't the only ones that had this happen to us. We were getting reductions like 50 percent a week for the couple of weeks before we started the incentive program. We now have arrested that fall, if you will, like we caught it with a rope, if you will. It's gone down a little bit, but not significant amount since then. So preventing us from continuing that fall was very important. And this means thousands of Washingtonians are going to get a shot at not losing their lives. So this is well, well worth it, in my view, for a relatively small investment. Lacey, did you have something to add on that? Um, I, I would just add for Steve, you know, given where we are right now and how far we have to go, we can meet the goal before June 30th. I want to be very clear about that. And if we do or not, and when we do, depends entirely on the people of Washington. Uh, we could hit it early next week if enough people step forward to, to get vaccinated. There is supply to do it. There are logistics to do it. Um, and we would love to see that happen. It could also be down to the wire. Um, and it, it really depends on us, on all of us, just like everything we've done throughout this pandemic. Uh, yes, talking about this 70 percent goal, look, we would love to open up before June 30th. We're going to do it on June 30th. Restaurateurs and everybody else can get their staff ready to go on June 30th. You can do that today. You don't have to wait. But there's a more important reason to get vaccination, and that is to save somebody's life that you love. And I do want to amend some of my comments. I said with Father's Day this weekend, it sure would be great to save your father's life by talking to them and sharing some medical information with them that might encourage him to get vaccinated. I want to amend my comments to say it's equally important for your mother. Uh, everybody has a life that's precious, and it came from two people. We can save both those lives potentially by asking them to get vaccinated because we love them. I hope people do that in the next couple of days. That's a joyous thing in the state of Washington. Be well.